Nelson and Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. What's your plan for tomorrow? Are you a leader or will you follow? Are you a fighter or will you cower? It's our time to take back the power. What's your plan for tomorrow? Are you a leader? It is February 15th, 2019. My name is Richard, and this is The Buzz, exclusively on TBK Magazine and TBKRadio.com. Hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day. It is 24 hours after the day of love. Hopefully you didn't get dumped, and if you're rocking it, Han Solo. Hopefully it wasn't too bad for you as well. Hopefully you found somebody, but it is now one day before the weekend, which means it is going to be party time up where we are because we're getting some freezing freaking rain so ice ice baby uh some programming notes i did say on the last episode of the buzz that there would not be a show on monday i lied to you i uh changed my mind as we were walking as i was walking through the door of the office to record this monday uh monday night we uh is our biggest night of the year it is our nutsy awards named after the stuffed squirrel my mom gave me and i thought since this is the sister show to live, I thought, well, why the hell not? So Monday morning, it is the first part of the Nutsies in a way. It is the story of Nutsy the Squirrel. And you find out that it's going to be a very deep episode of The Buzz. Um, there's a lot to this story and a lot of stuff that has never been discussed with anyone. So that is coming Monday morning and then Monday night, February 18th. It is the 2019, the fifth annual Nutsy Awards, where we find out the best and worst in entertainment and everything else. So that is coming up. Don't forget to check that out. Subscribe to our iTunes feed. Subscribe to Podbean. Subscribe to us on Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, at TBK Magazine, by the way, or anywhere else you get your podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us. Now that that's out of the way. So... I told you guys on Wednesday night or Wednesday morning after listening to that episode of me going on about social media that I was going to make today's topic about breakfast cereals. And I am so damn excited because how I'm picking topics for this show is by randomly improv the end of an episode. So that was just, hey, you know what coming to my mind first? Breakfast cereals. Why? I don't know. But that seemed to be a good idea, and I'm glad I did it because a breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. I don't get up early very often, but if you tell me there's food involved, I'm getting up at 3 in the fucking morning. Uh, my fr- one of my best friends from high school, shout out to Justin. I don't know if he listens to anything we do, but shout out to Justin. I, we lived in a very small town. <laughs> like, I mean, this is a town that a running spring is the highlight. Not could be confused with an actual spring for a mattress no it's a spring water thing if you don't know what that is google it there's you'll figure it out apparently back in the day they used to sell the water as a healing device and it would cure all ailments but instead it just give you the shits i mean that's pretty much how it'd go so my friend justin when we were growing up in el dorado and yeah don't correct me on that that's how it's pronounced they'll correct you we would he would call me when he got off work at walmart from walmart and be like, you want to go get pancakes? There's a problem with this. The closest place to get pancakes is an hour and a half away, no matter how you cut it. It was going to an IHOP an hour and a half away in any direction. So, you know, my dumb ass being sleeping and I'm being young, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going for some goddamn pancakes. So I would get up at three in the morning in the middle of dead sleep. My mom would be pissed because our house phone would be ringing yes kids this is in the days of actual phones being in homes and she would be so mad about who's calling us at this time of the morning richard and i didn't know then come to find out it's my friend justin asking us to go to i asking me to go to ihop and you know what breakfast man there is not a meal better than breakfast you can almost eat anything in the world for breakfast and it's acceptable but today we're going to look at traditional breakfast but I mean, you cannot go wrong. Like the meat, the best meat 
the candy of fucking meats. Bacon is a breakfast item. For anyone who gets up and starts their day with bacon, you automatically know the rest of your day is going to be, to quote a um, wrestler's theme song, glorious. It is going to be the best day ever, and you cannot deny that. Man, if you just give yourself just three pieces of bacon, screw everything else, you are good to go. But, I mean, there's so many great breakfast options. Sausage is another one. I'm not just solely purposing on meats here. Um, Ham. If you go to some places, a steak and eggs. I mean, you can have an egg cooked 90 different ways, I think is the... I don't know the number, but 90 seems appropriate. Scrambled, baked, fried, poached, over easy, sunny side up, omelet. I'm just hungry now. Like, I'm just pissing myself off the further I go into this deep dive. Hash browns are my favorite style of potato. Like, breakfast is the meal of choice, but one staple, if you did not have the time to cook a huge breakfast, things were made to make eating easier. Pop-Tarts, for example, which, by the way, if you have to put a Pop-Tart in the microwave, Slow the fuck down. Just a personal opinion. That's on me. Pop-Tarts, instant oatmeal. I, I, there's, that is one thing I don't understand how people can eat, but I just... But then, the protein shakes. But then, there's cereal. Made from grains, wheats, and a fuck ton of sugar. Like, you cannot go wrong with getting a bowl of cereal in the morning, especially when you were growing up. You get that bowl of cereal, you go sit down in front of the television, you turn on your favorite channel that had your favorite cartoons, and you binge watch those cartoons because you knew if you missed that day of cartoons that it may not come back around for another year. You may not see that episode for six fucking months. You had to be in front of that television. That is the true definition of must-see TV. Because now you can just go to YouTube or Netflix or Hulu or Amazon and stream it. But back in the day, it was an event. You had to get up at 6.30 in the morning. You put on some sort of house shoes. You didn't even change out of your pajamas. You're pretty much living every adult's world right now when you walk into a Walmart. Except you didn't leave the house. You got a giant bowl and you filled it to the top with some motherfucking cereal. That is the day of days. No one can deny how awesome it was to put in just to eat cereal. And as a kid, we, we all had different cereals we enjoyed. I know for myself, we would always get the off-brand cereals because the bags had more in them, like the Malto meal cereals. You know what I'm talking about. They would come in a they come in a giant bag that's resealable now, but in the day it was you had to use a chip clip. Those cereals are what defined my childhood more than anything. Like we didn't have Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. We had, what was it, sugar-covered bran flakes, I think is what it was, or something to that extent. You knew you grew up poor when you had the off-brand of the off-brand. That happened a few times. But there were some cereals that I did enjoy as a kid, but there are times, and I think the reason my mom started buying the cheap cereals for me is because my stupid ass, would she would let me pick my cereal. And when you're eight seven when you're six to ten picking a cereal is the equivalent of an nfl team having the number one draft pick why are you going to pick that cereal is it because of the taste is it because of the mascot most of the time for myself i wasn't going to pick anything healthy so that's out but most of the time for myself It was because what was inside of the box. I remember the days that breakfast cereals had a toy in them 
or something that was pretty freaking cool. Like 3D glasses to watch a cartoon. Or uh, there was the there's a back of a box that would have some sort of code puzzle on it, and you get a decoder, and you could have to find search on the back of the box with the decoder. That shit was cool. That was so awesome as a kid. I I, I remember getting, I think it was, I want to say it was Twix, and getting a box of Twix, and just sitting down with that decoder on the back trying to find out where the tricks rabbit was and there he was just magically in different places and then you'd have there was another one where you'd had to find the leprechaun for lucky charms oh my god good times and but my mom would get so pissed off at me for doing this like for every day every time we'd go shopping and cereal was to be a main purchase it became an event. Not that I bitched and moaned or become that little whiny kid that you would you see in the aisles crying that you would just want to beat with a stick at times. No, I became that kid that held like four boxes. I would set them in front of me in the aisle. So I would pick four boxes and then I would set them up on the shelf and I'd stare at them as if I was buying a new car. And trying to decide which toy was the best. If I had to send off a box top or more than one box top, automatically eliminated that cereal. Not because I didn't think the toy was cool and I wouldn't want it, but because my ass was lazy and I'm not going to eat four fucking boxes of cereal to make this happen. Like, I'm not just going to randomly be like, Mom, I want four boxes of Lucky Charms. And she would just would have looked at me and went, you're getting one box and you're going to go over there and shut the hell up, you little fat shit. That would have happened. So that would be eliminated. Then I would choose the one that would almost be, that you would be able to play with. Like, occasionally I would get, like, the decoder thing, because that was kind of cool. But if you could stay away from that and the toy was actually in the bag, oh, it was good times. Like, she wouldn't let me. I I remember times trying to eat cereal out of a box because she wouldn't let me get the toy until I completed the cereal. Because in the day, the the toy was in the bag. Like, it was in the bag with the cereal. Like, you had to complete the cereal or be a shit stain and take the open up the cereal box and dump the entire bag of cereal in a bowl to watch the toy fall out. And then you just didn't do anything with the cereal. But she wouldn't let that happen. No, I had to eat the fucking cereal first. But then there's those glorious boxes. And I don't know what cereal it would have been. Probably... For the sake of the argument, it was probably honeycomb because I enjoyed the shit out of some honeycombs that would put the toy under the bag. Oh, those were the best cereals because then you could just lift the bag out and there's the toy. You didn't even have to worry about opening the fucking cereal. I'm not the big, I I was not the biggest cereal fan growing up. Like I, I ate it. Because at times you just had to before school. Like you just woke up and you didn't have enough time to fully function as a person. But my God, if you put a toy at the bottom of the box, I'm surprised kids didn't get smart to this at times and just start opening the box, the bottom of the boxes in the stores and just having the toy pop out. But it was a free toy for three forty five. dollars Now, my problem with cereals evolved as an adult is I think there are some shitty cereal mascots. And growing when I was growing up, like mascots played a role in what I was going to choose. Like most of the time, if I were to choose a mascot, it would have been Captain Crunch. I fucking love Crunch Berries. I fucking love Peanut Butter Crunch. Like Captain Crunch is the shit. But if you put me in front of a box of King Vitamin, I'm just going to look at you and just give you the worst. I'm going to think horrible thoughts about you. I'm going to think you're the person who probably... You're that person who has the conspiracy theories that just makes you want to punch someone. You're that person. At that point, you are telling me 
that aliens shot JFK. If you set me down and have me pick a bowl of cereal and you give me a King Vitamin box for a mascot and tell me that's the greatest mascot of all time, get the fuck out. So that, I mean, there's some terrible ones. But man, cereal is a, like, there's another thing that bothers me too before I go any further. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed, but every cereal commercial ever, it's part of a balanced breakfast. But that breakfast is a glass of orange juice, the damn bowl of cereal, and a fucking piece of toast. What kind of fucking balanced breakfast is that? There's no protein in that. Like the cereal might have a little bit. What the fuck is the bread going to give you? And and 90% of the time, the toast has no butter. So you're looking at probably either a piece of wheat bread or white bread that's just burnt to a crisp in a toaster because, look, you could never judge when a, what a toaster would do. They had a mind of their own. They still fucking do. That's a problem. Like, I'm not going to sit around and be like, you know what? Bowl of cereal and toast and orange juice. That's how my day is going to go. And heaven forbid they ever make a mint cereal. I don't know if any they've ever tried it. But heaven forbid if they do. Because if they do that balanced breakfast ad with a cereal that has a mint flavor to it, I'm going to punch Kellogg's or Post right in the dick. Because that's a horrible idea. I don't know how many of you have ever brushed your teeth and then drank orange juice. I mean, it's right up there with getting your prostate checked. That is the worst thing in the world. It is an awful experience. That is a taste you're not... Once you taste that taste, it's stuck in your mouth for at least a week. You're not getting rid of that anytime soon. Plus, cereals as a kid, we always say that cereals were... Okay, so there's this argument that cartoons were better when we were kids. Were they, though? Were they? And that's a show coming soon, probably. But I think the same ranks for cereals, where as an adult, I'm like, eh, this isn't as good as I remember. Is that really the case? Like, did the cookie crisp formula change or did our taste buds go, you know what? This is just absolute dog crap. It probably did change, but it's still absolute dog shit. I remember uh, there was one cereal. Like, they just re-released Pop-Tart cereal, which was a thing in the 90s like we have the honey bun cereal right now and it is delicious the only healthy cereal i would eat growing up by the way is mini wheats and they had to be frosted but i would eat the shit out of them and i remember being like there was a time frame where they released different flavors of the frosting strawberry banana and something else and i fucking went nuts over the strawberry frosted mini wheats i think i ate six boxes of those in a month Needless to say, I know why I'm fat now, but it is what it is. Breakfast cereals, you know, I also jumped on people's asses for the longest time for eating cereal for dinner until I became an adult. And then I realized I can eat whatever the fuck I want for dinner. I can eat whatever the fuck I want for breakfast. You you know what? Am I going to eat an actual breakfast today or am I going to eat cold chili? That's usually a life decision I've got to make at like 9 in the morning. It's a good decision, too. But I always gave, used to give hell to people who ate cereal for dinner. And then I did it. And it's like I crossed over to the dark side. Sure, breakfast food for dinner is just special and fun. Like, I love breakfast for dinner. But, man, it's just so much better when you're an adult. I don't know why. But when you're just sitting there eating that breakfast for dinner, my God, it's a good day in the damn neighborhood. Let me tell you. So breakfast cereals. I don't I don't know if if you have a favorite. Um, I know a lot of people are going to say Cheerios because I think a lot of people grew up eating Cheerios. I did not. I, I don't think I actually started eating Cheerios, at Cheerios until I got married the second time. <laughs> uh the marriage I'm in now, <laughs> but Cheerios was never something I actively went out of my way. I like honey nut Cheerios. I don't like plain Cheerios. I think they're boring and taste like, well, cardboard, but I feel that way about, you know, let me tell you something. Checks. If you don't have checks and checks mix, 
Fuck it. That is the worst cereal. Kix, terrible. I'd rather have Raisin Bran Crunch. And I don't care for... I don't care for fruit in boxes. When there's a fruit in a cereal box and you go to eat it, it's like chomping down on a damn rock. Like, I'm scared my teeth are going to break while I eat some of these cereals. Honey Bunches of Oats? No. I can't do that one anymore because I'm still scared. Like, uh, the one that actually has strawberries or bananas in it. Not not just frosting like the shredded mini wheats were, but no, if you put actual pieces of strawberry and banana in a box of cereal and then try to feed it to me, a tooth will break, and I am scared to death of that happening to me at least one to two times. Like, freaking the F out scared that that's going to happen when I eat a cereal like that. So, breakfast cereal. If, if you enjoy breakfast cereals, I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Buzz. I, I know you're with me. Uh, it's cereal is just something special. I it, it, it makes things easier of a morning. It's great if you're the on-the-go parent and need to feed 36 kids. Like, I get this. Because, you know, look... I already know it's going to happen. The day is going to come when I'm a parent and the child's going to have 20 friends over. What do you do for breakfast? My God, you just load them up on sugar and send them the fuck home. That's the best part of breakfast, man. When you have children, load them up and send them to someone else. Uh, it's sugar, man. Uh, sugar's everywhere in cereal, too. I cannot get over the fact that I never was a hyper child. But as an adult, if I eat a sugar-based kid cereal, to quote one of those bands, I'm bouncing off the walls again. It's ridiculous. So, guys, check out, enjoy some uh, breakfast cereals while you're listening to this episode. And don't forget Monday. Uh, the buzz will be here. We're gonna. I'm gonna discuss the whole story behind Nutsy and why the Nutsy Awards will always now be on February the 18th. So, something to consider. Uh, and then Monday night, the Nutsy Awards happen on TBK Magazine and TBKRadio.com. Hopefully, you guys will check that out. Hopefully, you voted. And I cannot wait. Uh, going up later today on the website or early Saturday is my Coheed and Cambria review. They were awesome live. Hands down, one of the best performances you'll ever see. Uh, I think the word to describe the concert the best way for me was passion. So check that out. And some awesome photos from that, too, I got. So that's coming up. A uh, new induction into the hall. It's going to be a Valentine's Day theme, which is going to be kind of late, but it's the first time we've ever inducted a couple. So that's happening later on. Uh, this weekend, some fun stuff coming down. SNS this weekend as well. So don't forget to stick around for all of that. Guys, thank you for joining us on this edition of The Buzz. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe and don't do anything I wouldn't do. <laughs>